First, I want to thank you for taking the time to click on this video. I actually was considering that this video um, message would be played at my funeral, which is why the title says, don't make me have to die for you to hear this. But what I have to say is extremely important. Um, and I am reading notes so that I don't get off topic and uh, go down rabbit trails. So please bear with me. It was important for me to speak to you at this time because there are important things that need to be said and I need you to hear me and listen to what I have to tell you. A good friend of mine, Chris Stewart, preached a message one time in youth group and for visual purposes, I want you to think about a shoelace. The end of a shoelace has a little plastic cap on it to keep it from unraveling. That little plastic cap represents your life here on earth and the rest of the shoelace represents eternity. We spend so much time focusing on the little plastic cap and ignoring eternity. Colossians 3.2 says, to set your mind on things that are above and not on earthly things. I pray that you change your thinking today. I want to ask that you listen to what I have to say with an open mind and an open heart. Some things that I'm going to say might not be too hard to grasp, but other things will be extremely hard to take in. But just know that it is extremely important. Pretty much everything you have ever been told in your entire life is a lie. Think about that for just a second. You've not been taught, you've been indoctrinated to believe certain things and the majority of what you believe is a lie. Even definitions of words are not the same. For example, most people right now, if I were to say the word God, most of you think Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the truth is, everyone that says God doesn't mean the same God that you do. I'm going to really blow your mind with this next statement. But not everyone saying Jesus is speaking of the Messiah, the son of Yahweh. The Antichrist name is Jesus. How do you hijack a religion? You remove names and insert titles. Then you slowly change the definitions without making it obvious. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Think of that. And before you know it, people think they are following the son of Yah, but they are following the Antichrist. I understand that that statement is going to be hard to accept, but it's the truth. And it is the condition of the world we live in. Why do you think we have more people claiming to be Christians, but our world is darker than ever? I present to you that the church has compromised under the umbrella of being relevant and reaching the lost. But what has happened is instead of the world being more godly, the church is more worldly. When I was growing up in church, we had a standard. Motives in religion were not always right, but the standard of walking the narrow road and being set apart was more evident. Having said that, back then, you weren't allowed to question those in authority over you. They went to seminary and they were smarter and knew more than you did. But the Bible clearly says in Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Questioning everything is hard, especially when you realize how many lies we believe. But if we don't question, how will we ever know if what we believe is true or not? Questioning and being willing to face the facts that I have been lied to and to seek the truth is what changed my life. 
I went from the Bible being black words on white paper, a book that I read out of obligation and Christian duty, to loving, loving the word. <clears throat> I love to read it. I love to study it and to talk about the Bible with my friends. Most of my friends, no matter what we start talking about, we end up back talking about the word. I love it. It's my favorite thing. But my life didn't change until I read the Bible and believed what I read versus reading what I believed. Matthew 7 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there be many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew seven twenty one was one of the scriptures when I was seeking truth that captured me the most. It says, Matthew seven twenty one says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And just to point out, sinners and people who are not following Yah are not calling him Lord. Let that sink in for a moment. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. This is very important. There are so many things in there that we don't know about because nobody talks about it. If they do talk about it, they teach from a specific indoctrinated lens. For example, when I grew up in church, thinking about heaven, I just thought we would be little spirits floating around on clouds. While heaven is better than hell, obviously, being a spirit floating around on a cloud didn't sound any better than being here in this world, living this life, having a husband, children, grandchildren, all of the things we have here. But the reality is, I don't know where that thought came from. But when you read the Bible and the words of Yeshua himself, he came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I just learned that in 2022. The gospel of the kingdom. You know, in church, we're told that the gospel is the good news. And it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua. And while it is very important, obviously, that Yeshua died, was buried, and, resurrect and resurrected, that's not the whole of the gospel. The gospel he preached was the gospel of the kingdom. There is a kingdom. Keith Green used to sing a song, and the words were, In six days you created everything, but you've been working on heaven for 2,000 years. Basically saying, this is a garbage can compared to what heaven will be like. And the reality is there is a kingdom that is coming. And in this kingdom, we will be real beings with real jobs and responsibilities. Revelation speaks of us ruling and reigning with Christ. It's going to be so amazing. This time on earth is basically a job interview. You know, the parable of the talents. He gives you this life. How you live it and what fruit you bear determines what you do in his kingdom. And this is where we choose eternal life or death. The Bible says, choose life. It's a choice. If we choose life, taking up our cross and following him, then we get to live eternally. Don't believe me? Read your Bible. It's all in there. Read your Bible and believe what you read. The prayer that changed my life was, Father, take everything away from me that I have ever been taught and you teach me your truth. That prayer changed my life. I prayed it with the mindset of religious and spiritual matters, but he took it much further. Guys, we have been lied to. And I know there are many that don't want to hear this or want to live this life. Hold on. There are many that don't want to hear this or want to live this life. They want to do what they want to do and have their fun, but the wages of sin is death. 
which equals the opposite of choosing eternal life. Others want to put their head in the sand and ignore and continue to live in the matrix. But the truth is, this is reality. This is the real world, as Morpheus would say. And we have a choice to make. And remember that shoestring with that little piece of plastic? That's a very short amount of time in light of eternity. And time is running out. Look around. The condition of our world has gotten so dark so quickly, and the only thing that is going to save us is Yeshua. No politician is going to save us. America is not going to be great again and save us. The only thing that is going to save us is Yeshua's return. You have to choose this day whom you will serve. You have to choose where you want to live, basically. Do you want to be a part of Yah's kingdom? Or do you want to be the master of your own kingdom? And that kingdom is going to come to an end. It's just like when Satan took Yeshua on the high mountain and he said, I'll give you all of this if you'll bow down and worship me. Which kingdom do you want? Do you want this kingdom with all of this stuff that's going to burn up one day? Or do you want to be in his kingdom spending eternity with him? The choice is yours. I pray you make the right one. It only costs that little piece of plastic. Matthew 16, 25 speaks on that. That little piece of plastic on the shoestring to gain access to his kingdom.